Hey Kentucky, this is Jennifer Palumbo. Tonight, a plan to start high school fall sports in the bluegrass. Senator Mitch McConnell and Amy McGrath trade challenges to debate. And EKU basketball coach A.W. Hamilton shares his inspirational story. All that and more next on Hey Kentucky. Welcome to Hey Kentucky, I'm Jennifer Palumbo in for Mary Jo Perino. Tonight, LEX 18 Sports Director Keith Farmer is my co-host. And Keith, a big happy birthday to you, the big 5-0. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling a little older now. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ready for 50, but it's here, so I'll go with it. It's coming for me in January, so I'll be right there with you. <laughs> All right, well, with practice for the fall high school sports season set to begin Monday, the Kentucky High School Athletic Association's Board of Governors met today to talk about any possible changes to the original plan. The board had three options, sticking with the plan presented last month to begin playing sports, delay the start of competition until September 28th, or a hybrid model that allows low-touch sports to begin earlier than high-touch sports. A vote was taken on option two, voted down 15 to three. The hybrid model was voted down 13 to five. That means option one presented last month remains in place. Several board members agree this will be the most unusual year ever in high school sports, and it's the toughest choice they've ever had to make. For everybody out there to understand, this is more than just a whimsical decision for people. There are people on this call who have been working on this 24-7 since March 12th. Uh, this is challenging for anybody involved in education and, and the educational part of athletics. I think there sometimes is a feeling that, that people can just magically pull decisions out of a hat, and it doesn't happen. Individual school districts still have the option to delay the start of their season. The governor, Department of Education, and state health officials all have to approve the KHSAA's plan. And Keith, that's the big question. Will the governor make changes to this plan? The two no votes coming from Jefferson County Public School Board members who have concerns because they have a 10% positivity rate right now in Jefferson County. Yeah, I think they were really worried about pushing it back. Uh, my only concern is just, you know, if you start pushing it back, I agreed with one of the board members, if you push it back, and then all of a sudden things get worse, well, then now you definitely don't have a season. So I think it's better to, to try it while seems, things seem to be going okay. And, and then if you have to do it down the road, maybe they get at least a couple of games in. Yeah, and that's what they're hoping. Well, now to the college level, an NCAA council is making a recommendation that could have a major impact on fall sports. The Division I Council is recommending an additional year of eligibility for all fall sport athletes, regardless of how much they're able to compete this season. That means participation in 2020 would not count against any student athlete competing in a fall sport, whether that's because the conference has decided to postpone or cancel its season, because the student athlete has made the personal choice to sit out and forego the season due to health and COVID-19 concerns, or because the team or conference doesn't end up completing the entirety of the season. For UK football, the ruling would mean the potential for another year with Terry Wilson at the helm, along with the rest of the senior class. And Keith, it would also give the coaches an option to play some of those younger players because they won't have to redshirt this year. Yeah, exactly. I, this one kind of surprised me a little bit that they would do this, uh, maybe because of the anticipation of so many games being canceled and everything, that's why they decided to do it. But, uh, you know, I think you could see guys come back. I think you could see them go on and do their own thing. We saw it a lot with the spring sport athletes. Hey, I got to start my career or whatever I'm going to do and I'm not going to hang around for one more year to play a sport. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it shakes out uh, when next year does come around and they have that option. I think it's a good idea, so we'll have to wait and see if it gets final approval. Well, staying with Kentucky football, the 2020 Cats are getting more preseason love from several national media outlets. With the Big Ten and Pac-12 out of action, CBS Sports has revised its lineup and now puts UK at number 21, one of seven SEC teams in the top 25. Mark Stoops' squad is one of 10 teams that jumped into the top 25 after the conference cancellations. Meanwhile, the staff at Yahoo Sports believes the Wildcats are the 18th ranked team in the country ahead of this very strange season, Keith. And the big story, of course, is how many SEC teams are in these rankings that if the SEC season happens, Kentucky will be playing them. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a tough year, really, all the way around for the SEC. I think the, the main thing here was many of us thought that even with the Pac-12 and the Big Ten involved, 
Kentucky probably st still should have started out the season in the top 25. Uh, they certainly were close to it uh, in the in the AP or the the uh, coaches poll. So um, you know, finally getting a little love. Mm -hmm. I don't like that it took teams that, you know being left out to do it. Right. Well, some students who've returned to Kentucky's college campuses in the coronavirus era are concerned about safety compliance from their peers. Students are back on campus across Kentucky, including at UK and U of L. Aside from concerns about off-campus parties, there are also reports of students not masking up or socially distancing on school grounds or in businesses on campus. Several concerned students say they'd rather miss out on a normal experience if it means a successful fight against the virus. All this comes, as, of course, as university leaders laid out vigorous and detailed plans trying to have a safe return to school. At Kentucky, the positivity rate from testing has been low, but there are discrepancies in the reporting process that muddy the pictures. And Keith, I was looking the latest numbers, the discrepancies between the health department and the university. The health department has more than 300 students. The university has 200 some students. So there are questions about how all these numbers are being added up. Yeah, part of it's some of them are all getting tested on campus, others getting tested off campus, right. so maybe that's some of the discrepancy. But the thing is, you've got to take care of business because we've already seen where Notre Dame and North Carolina and today NC State have all decided to go online. And you know as a student, you want to be involved in what's going on around campus. You want to be on campus. So if you don't do the right thing, you won't be there. You'll be back home and doing everything online. And a few students could ruin it for everyone, and, and let's hope that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Well, now to Kentucky's U.S. Senate race, where longtime incumbent Mitch McConnell and challenger Amy McGrath have been trading challenges about facing off in a debate. Today, McGrath responded to a challenge from McConnell yesterday. The Democrat is asking for three debates to be held in different regions of the state before the election. It followed a letter from the Senate Majority Leader suggesting a Lincoln-Douglas-style debate with no notes on the table, no props, and no audience. Today, McConnell's campaign announced it accepted an invitation for a televised debate with McGrath, but it wasn't immediately clear whether the deal would be for a single event or three. But, Keith, I think the debates are very important. It's good for the, you know, the voters to see them go head-to-head, -head, even if it's socially distanced with no audience. And so we'll just have to see how it, you know, plays out and where. I thought it was interesting that McConnell came up with the idea, you know, for, for no notes, uh, just, you know, being able to look head to head and, and to, to talk about what you know. I, I'd like to see more of that, I think, uh, going forward with a lot of debates. And it's certainly going to be interesting to see. We'll find out uh, what McGrath is made of when uh, she gets the chance to go up against him. So I'm glad that they are at least getting one debate in, hopefully three. Could make for some interesting TV, too. Well, now mm. to our weekly feature on Hey <laughs> Kentucky, What's the Beef? Sponsored by the Kentucky Beef Council. First up, a black militia group says it will return to Louisville next month during the Kentucky Derby. The group, known as the NFAC, was in the city last month protesting injustice in the Breonna Taylor case and demanding the truth. Also promising that, quote, the city would burn if Attorney General Daniel Cameron didn't complete the investigation into Taylor's death in four weeks. And Kentucky's Fraternal Order of Police has come out against a proposal to ban no-knock search warrants and penalize officers who don't activate body cameras while executing search warrants. They say Brianna's law is based on an incomplete investigation and does not provide due process for officers. And that's tonight's edition of What's the Beef? He's a winner on the basketball court, but he's also winning a battle with cancer. Up next on Hey Kentucky, EKU basketball coach A.W. Hamilton joins me to share his story and what he thinks about the wild year for college hoops. That's next on Hey Kentucky. <laughs> 